Welcome back to Crawford Clark Close-Up. As you've probably guessed from the intro, this is the first in our week of Mission Impossible reviews, a review for each of the movies to date in the run-up to the release of Mission Impossible Fallout, the sixth instalment in the adrenaline-filled franchise later this week. We begin by taking you all the way back to 1996, and the first film for already accomplished star Tom Cruise as a producer, the first Mission Impossible adventure. Thomas Cruise Mappeth of the Fourth, having already established himself in the movie world in the 15 years prior to the first Mission film, since his debut Endless Love back in 1981, was raring to go on his 18th film Mission Impossible when filming began back in 1995. It seems impossible to believe that Cruise's mission started out as a hugely popular television series, which began 30 years earlier in 1966 and ran right through, albeit with a sizable gap in the middle, until 1990. Cruise felt that it was time to resurrect the characters and the stories and translate them into big screen action adventures, and the first film in what was to become a franchise was the beginning of big things to come. As has become tradition, the series starts with a little mission before the main titles, which here bears little reference to the rest of the narrative. We see Ethan Hunt, masked up, interrogating a man with a seemingly dead woman on a bed in a room. The man is drugged once the Impossible Missions Force, the IMF, have the name they're looking for, and the man's body is moved from the room. The woman is brought back to consciousness by Cruz's Ethan Hunt, and we can tell that the two of them are on the same team. From this little opener, audiences are launched straight into the picture, and the opening titles play out much like the television series before it had done, flashy with scene selections from the rest of the story. The refreshing update of the Mission Impossible theme from composer Danny Elfman is also fantastic, and draws audiences right in. What's especially great about the Mission movies is that they don't scrimp on their budgets. Despite the budget for this first outing, in retrospect, being much smaller than that of the following films, there's a terrific lineup in casting for this adventure. John Voigt is IMF Chief Jim Phelps. Jean Renault of Lyon fame is Krieger. We have Ving Rhames as Luther, who will become a series stalwart. Kristen Scott Thomas and acting royalty Vanessa Redgrave. The director of choice to launch Mission Impossible onto 90s audiences was the mighty Brian De Palma, who sticks very closely to the gritty, espionage feel of the television series, whilst adding in all the elements required for a 90s blockbuster to compete with the Bond series, the Die Hards, and all the other 90s action heroes. De Palma and Cruz proved that audiences were ready for another spy protagonist in the form of Ethan Hunt, and Cruz acquits himself very well to the role from the outset. He's sneaky from the start, always trying to be one step ahead of everyone on his team, and learning that you can't simply trust someone just because you think you know them. This film has it all. Phelps gets the mid-flight entertainment instructing him of his mission, should he choose to accept it, and the story proper begins as Phelps instructs his team that the knock list of CIA undercover agents is to be stolen in Prague, and they need to capture photographic proof of a traitor within the Prague embassy. Things go awry, and Hunt quickly becomes the last member of his team alive. Hunt must tread carefully and try to work out how to recover the stolen list. Quick to discover that the whole mission was a mole hunt, and that there's actually a different traitor in the system, Hunt comes into contact with Vanessa Redgrave's character Max, who becomes a reluctant ally. Hunt also learns that Claire, Jim Phelps' wife, is still alive, and they join forces and recruit Ving Rhames' Luther Stickle and Jean Renault's Krieger to download the knock list from the Black Room in Langley. The scene is the tensest in the film as Hunt is suspended above the floor of the concealed room, downloading the list, trying his hardest not to set off the sensors in the room. It's a brilliantly effective sequence in a film that features a remarkably small amount of action set pieces for an action blockbuster, and it's our Crawford Clark close-up standout scene from this first film. When Hunt discovers that Phelps is still alive, he smells that something isn't right, and once again he's one step ahead at all times, and the climactic finale with the train and the helicopter in the Channel Tunnel at the end of the film is an edge-of-your-seat set piece, most extraordinary for the fact that Daredevil Cruz is actually doing these stunts himself. Whilst a number of fans of the series believe that this is one of the most complicated plots, and in essence the most boring of the films in the series, we disagree. 
It's certainly slower than the following films, with less of the bombastic stunts that we'll see Cruise perform later in the series, but nevertheless, De Palma directs a taut, engaging thriller with great action cues and an emphasis on strong character building. This is an intelligent entry in the series and a sign of great potential for later mission films. Released in the summer of 1996, the film grossed a whopping $457 million on an $80 million budget, proving that Ethan Hunt was here to stay. From Crawford Clark Close Up, we rate the first film in the Mission Impossible series. Alrighty then. What are your thoughts on the first Mission Impossible? How do you think it compares to the other entries in the canon? Share your opinions in the comments, and if you like this review, please subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also find us Crawford Clark Close Up on Facebook and Twitter, and you can drop us an email with suggestions for the channel. Crawford Clark Close Up at gmail.com. Stay tuned to Crawford Clark Close Up for the rest of this week as we'll be reviewing all of the Mission Impossible films in the run up to Mission Impossible Fallout released on July the 25th in cinemas nationwide. Up next, we've got the John Woo directed Mission Impossible 2. Thanks for watching, and until next time, that's a wrap. <laughs>